the third leg of the triangle is reactive. All right, so I don't have my camera up, but I tested this already, and it seems like the audio and the screen capture are working. This. I'm going to trust okay. that. And so we know from and the Pythagorean theorem. Get into energy storage and distribution. That uh, Q squared, and I'm just going to use the um, arrows here. So Q squared. I've got a little background noise. Equals P. Uh, squared. So the, plus the, the S course, um, we start start week squared. one. What we're going to do is just that look at um, energy that's all around us. And it can be um, electrical, mechanical, chemical, software. Probably no nuclear, so but it's just it's okay. just taking so Q squared equals P squared you know, plus battery. S squared. It could be the gas in your tank. It could be the food in your fridge. It could be the air in your bicycle tire. Uh, it could be your car, ba you know, whatever. You know, get creative. It could even be like the heat in your house. How hot, you know, how hot is my house compared to the air outside? How much energy is there? So that's the first week. Second week, we're going to dig into economics. So in the, in the second week, uh, a, lot of the, a lot of what this course focuses on is making financial decisions. So if I've got, if I'm going to say, even right here, we've got this little space heater running, and the question is, um, I, like in order to heat this room, I could either buy one space heater at 100 bucks, or I could buy... Um, five at 50 to do the same job, well, I'm going to buy the one at 100 bucks. It might be down more frequently, and I'll have to factor that into my loss statement, like, oh, I can't ever afford to be down, I better go with backup. So a lot of, a lot of the, um, what we'll do are, are financial decisions, and there are six different functions. There are sort of three different ways of looking at money. Do you want the money now in a lump sum? Do you want the money in the future as a lump sum, or can I just pay a, a little bit at a time? And then you can compare those three scenarios. So there's the present value, annuity value, and future value. That's what we do in week two, because that will drive the decisions on these other guys. Um, economics applied, so we will take the functions that we derive in week two and actually just let Excel do that for us from then on. And then we'll compare. Like, how, and, and so it's actually a really good programming exercise. Like, how well did I do programming the function versus it's built into Excel, right? Because no one's going to expect you every time to calculate the series for a sine wave. You just calculate sine and it's done. So that's, that's week three. Um, week four, energy and demand. So we'll look at we'll look at power bills. We'll see what utilities charge. Um, week five, we'll start to get into the what the the power factor. And what I'm going to encourage you to do right off the bat is go and look at this power factor video. 25 minutes long or so. Um, and you can see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm building a triangle. So down the bottom, this is, this is real power. This is apparent power. And this is reactive power. And in the power factor correction literature, what you're trying to do is just shrink this, shrink this guy, so that um, so I show you how to calculate it. It's a, just the Pythagorean theorem. It's it's covered in detail in 213, but we're not teaching 213 anymore. So there's your there's your power factor lecture. Um,
I do. This is this is from um, 2016's course intro. It's all valid. I mean, the course really has not changed, so you can you can look at that. Okay, so that was week five, power factor. Week six, uh, system efficiencies and losses. So what we're going to have our motors, belts, fans, and so what you have to do is say how much how much upstream energy do I put in to get a certain amount downstream. All right, um, capacity factor and demand side management. So in this in this case you're going to know that your technology is not going to run all the time. That's your capacity factor and then how do I um, manage my demand so I'm not exceeding supply. Uh, pumped hydro and water horsepower, so again, you know, mainly unit units conversion. You got kilowatts coming in, horsepower coming out, vice versa. Uh, week nine, this one's fairly challenging. It's compressed air storage. And what we're going to do is, is pump some air underground. And this, this is happening. This is not, not science fiction. We're going to pump some air underground mm -hmm. and uh, basically trade energy. So when it's, when it's cheap, we're going to pull from the grid. When it's expensive, we're going to push. Uh, kind of same deal. Vari variable frequency drives have different power demands at different frequencies. The whole point here is, is driving efficiency. Electric vehicles, again, I, I, this, this is something we're going to see, I, I think, in pretty short order, where you've got an electric vehicle, you've got your local weather report, and like, let's just say, you know, you're, you're not going to drive home until 5, um, you're not going to drive home until 5 and it's going to be sunny the rest of the afternoon. Let your battery drain. You know, let, let, your, let your car push to the grid um, because it's going to be sitting there charging later, for example. It's, it's just, so that's, that's, that's an example where, you're, where you're, your car might actually, um, or you know, let's just say you're, you're at home, you know that you're going to need 80% of your battery, but not 100%. Let your car run your house for a couple hours in the middle of the night. That kind of stuff. So just timing. Pulling it all together, I don't remember exactly um, what that guy's about. Um, let's just take a look, though. By, by week 12, things are kind of um, winding down a little bit. Yeah, week, week two kind of softens up a little bit. Week, week 12 does. It's a little, little bit of a catch-up week. Um, 13, you're out. Um, Doing some reading. One really nice thing about this this course too. There's a lot of theory, but there's a lot of like this is actually happening. Like this is exactly what's happening at that uh, Bonneville Power Northwestern Energy. <clears throat> this one's getting a little creative, and then. You know, you're going out and taking a, taking some photographs of energy storage around you. So that's that's pretty much the course. That's pretty much the course. And then there's a final. So let me um, let me put that one in the bank as lecture one.